Swayam Prabha. Digital India. Educated India. students we are in the uh, second week now we are getting into the sixth lecture uh, on the data and its types and this course is the practitioners approach in analytics we are basically looking at the descriptive predictive and prescriptive analytics components of it and today when we talk about the most important part of analytics about data and the different types of data and why we need to understand these types of data uh, and I hope that you guys have already been reading uh, what is assigned for your reading from the syllabus and as well as you are following the textbooks that are prescribed as part of the course and from now onwards we will be starting more focusing more towards the uh, applied side of the course but also remember that we are also applying it from a practitioner's viewpoint a person who does it on a daily basis so hence some of the things that we would be interested in might not be too much into the theory but more into how to how do we apply the theory with that we will start today's lecture and the topic today is data and its types and let us start with the first term data. Data if you ask somebody to talk about data sometimes people describe data in the form of something like this and say this is a database and whatever is stored in this is the data. A classical you know uh, comical diagram that people would do on this and there is a lot of other conceptions misconceptions confusions everything are associated with the data the dictionary meaning of data when we talk about what does the dictionary says these are facts and statistics could be facts or could be raw facts or it could be statistics collected together for reference or analysis so uh, for example if you are measuring that let us say uh, you have fever so let us say have fever is that true so how do we ensure that so let us take an example that we are recording the temperature of you in multiple times in a day. So here you have is a date, then you have is a time and temperature. So date we will say 112018, so the new year day at 6 am, 6 your temperature is 99.6 degrees and at 1 1 2 0 1 8 at 13 hours your temperature is 100.8 and 1 1 2 0 1 8 at uh, 21 the temperature is 102.1 so the question is what is this temperature obviously the temperature is in fahrenheit okay then you have 2 1 2 0 1 8 at 6 uh, the temperature is 99.8 something like this. So if you think about this this is facts on the particular date time your body temperature is measured using a thermometer and if this is given to a doctor this collected this temperature and given to a doctor he would probably analyze this and say you have more fever in the night so you might be having malaria something like that. So it is meant for reference it is also meant for your so everybody can know what your temperature was so this data is collected and as well as the doctor can analyze the data and decide what, what, what disease you are suffering from okay. So uh, again facts and statistics collected together for reference and analysis when in future the future can be immediate future or long term okay. could be far away into the time. The two popular definitions that is uh, from the practitioner standpoint okay. these two popular definitions are from the practitioner standpoint practitioners standpoint I apologize for my spellings you have to check my spellings quite frequently. 
So, the, for the practitioners, there is a business viewpoint. And what is the business viewpoint? The most important part? It says it is information, information in a raw, R A W, raw and unorganized, unorganized information in raw and unorganized form, form that is pertaining to pertaining to conditions, uh, ideas or objects. Okay. So, these are raw and unorganized uh, form, information in the raw and unorganized form about conditions, conditions can be conditions about uh, organization, it can be about a machine, it can be a human being, worker etcetera or it could be about ideas, new ideas uh, like a new business idea or a new product idea or it could be about objects. Uh, it could be information about a particular raw material that are you going to use it in the manufacturing etcetera like that. So, here is an example will be raw materials etcetera. So, whatever the uh, raw and unorganized information collected on this behalf that is the business viewpoint. So, when you say you are collecting data about the organization you call it as organizational data. If you are collecting data about the machine sometimes people call it as production data or machine data you can call whichever way it is. When you have things about raw materials you will say inventory data stuff like this. Okay. So, depending upon what you are doing in business you will can get lot of different type of data. So, when you collect all these data and put together in some format so that you can refer it later that is where the concept of BI comes into picture what we discussed earlier in the class as business intelligence. Okay. So, the business viewpoint data is specifically as per the pertaining to conditions ideas or objects whatever the raw and unorganized information. Whereas, in the computer science viewpoint or the computer viewpoint it is slightly different. It looks at the, the viewpoint is here is that we assume here in the computer viewpoint that these are symbols or signals, symbols or signals, signals that are inputted that are input stored and processed. processed by a computer, computer uh, for, for output as usable information. So, in an example uh, if you write a program uh, let us say input x. Uh, uh, let us see product equal to x times times 3 output product. Let us see if this is a computer program and if you provide the input data, input data is provided as input data is equal to 9, then it does is it takes 9 multiplies it by 3 and this is whatever the result 9 times 3 27. So, the input data and the output what we will get out of this is output will be 27 9 times 3 27. So, the input of 9 was given to a computer and the computer processed the output to be 27 by doing the process of multiplication here. Okay. So, the computer looks at this as a data that is provided to it. Similarly, you can think about data that is being stored in the database and those kind of aspects. With this what we will do is we will jump into the next thing the different type of data. Okay. So, we can always say that there is statis, statisticians and uh, academicians, academicians consider 
data uh, differently. Okay. So, if you are looking at doing data from a research standpoint, then uh, this is not the approach. Here we are not looking, we are just basically looking at how to do this for uh, in the industry or the business industry as a day to day function. So, our aim is to do day to day analytics, which we what we call as the workflow, which is the most let us say we cover about 60 percent of that as part of this. Then we also talk about control analytics, okay, which we will probably talk about uh, uh, 30 percent and then capacity we will talk about about 10 percent. So, that is how we will control we will go through the course apparently. Okay. So, from that viewpoint what we say is that the practitioner's approach says is that the data is divided into three buckets or three uh, let us call the three broad categories, categories, three broad categories uh, depending on the depending on the decision outcomes. Okay. So, since it is three, it is better to draw it as a, a diagram. So, let us make boxes let us assume that this is data. So, the first classification of data is let us call it as the quantitative classification. So, this is the quantitative data that we are talking about. Second one we are talking about let us talk about is the textual data text related data and then the third classification let us talk about is the qualitative data. So, the data is broadly classified into three quantitative number one, textual number two and qualitative number three. So, we will see what each one of them and this quantitative is further divided into two as far as we are concerned and the first one is the continuous data. Okay. Second one is the discrete data. So, quantitative data is divided into continuous and discrete. Then textual data is textual. So, there is no classification for that and qualitative data similar to quantitative data can be divided into two again and this division one part is the numeric data and the other part is the alpha numeric data right so there's a numeric data and alpha numeric data so now we will see what each one of them are but in the broad sense this is a different compared to so this classification fication is different from what uh, textbooks provides like nominal, ordinal, etcetera, but this classification can be mapped, classification can be mapped easily in a one to one, uh, one to one uh, similarity. Okay. So, let us see what are the individual aspects of this and this is our practitioner's classification of the data. So, <coughs> the first thing is we are going to talk about is the quantitative data. Okay. Obviously, quantitative data popularly known as known as 
numeric data, popularly known as numeric data among practitioners. Practitioners. So, when practitioners typically talk about numeric data, they are literally referring to quantitative data. Okay. Uh, there is some fine line in between, but that thing that we will clear out later. Okay. So, in this numeric data, if you remember the diagram, the qualitative data was divided like this. Qualitative data was divided into the two things. One was continuous, the other one was discrete. So, let us see what these two are. Okay. The continuous data popularly known as popularly known as known as scale or interval data. among practitioners. So, when the practitioner says I am dealing with a scale data or interval data, then they are talking about the continuous data which is within the quantitative data stream. Okay. So, the most important thing is about this data, the characteristics, the, let us talk about the characteristic. Characteristic of this is values, these data values, okay. when I say values, these are data values. Data values belong to an infinite subset, infinite subset of real numbers. Okay. So, the data values belong to an infinite set of real numbers. Real numbers we know starts from minus infinity to plus infinity. Okay. So, let us take some examples and understand what it means. Wages is an interval data, cost of goods, cost of goods produced, annual profit, okay, etcetera. So, if you think about it, the wages, the wages can technically vary between. 0 to infinity, a large number, cost of goods again 0 to infinity, annual profit can be a negative minus infinity to plus infinity something like this. Okay. So, but it is not really infinity, there is some large number, we think about it that way. So, if you think about it, this is a subset of the real numbers. Okay. They, so, they are continuous data and that is a subset of the real numbers definitely. Now, the second one, the discrete data which is also when the it is popularly known as okay, known as the discrete data. Uh, so, some when somebody says discrete data by practitioners that means they are talking about quantitative discrete data. And the most important thing is the characteristic of this. Characteristic of this is the values, values belong to, to a finite or infinite, finite or infinite subset of natural integers okay so here you will probably get a value of the annual profit could be something like for example profit you can take a value of 300 rupees and 60 paise something like this or a profit could be another value would be minus 64 pi 64 rupees 34 paise something like this so, these are real numbers because you are it is a continuous value. Whereas, in the case of a natural integers, what we are trying to do is it is basically it is countably finite. So, an example is example of this is number of children, children in a family. 
So, the values can vary between 0 to infinity, well in, not infinity, a large number. So, you will have numbers like this as uh, there is could be 0 child, there could be 1 child, there could be 2 child, there could be 3 child etcetera. You will never get a 2.3 child because this is a wrong information. So, these type of values where it is countable, it is a countable natural integer value that kind of a values are called as the discrete data. Okay. Another example is the number of products, number of products of an organization. Okay. That is another case, right. So, uh, the other part is this when the this is an important point in this you should remember when the values of discrete uh, data is very large very large it may also be considered considered as continuous data. This is where some people get confused. An example, I will give you a very good example for this. Let us consider the age of a person. Okay. So, a person can have an age of uh, uh, 1 year, 7 year, 64 years, etcetera. Okay. So, these values ideally speaking uh, if you have a large set very very large if you count the number they if you document the data of the age of everybody in India then obviously you will get all sort of values multiple times. So, then sometimes people will say that okay, this value is similar to that of a continuous data. So, when people large very large set of discrete data as equivalent to continuous data that is where the uh, sometimes the confusion happens. But for the practical purposes, let us consider that what that their quantitative qualitative sorry quantitative data is divided into two the continuous data and the discrete data. And I told you also at what condition where the discrete data when there is a large set of it sometimes tend to be treated like a continuous data. All right. So, we hope that I hope that you understand the concepts of the quantitative data aspect of this. Okay. Now, let us move to the next type of data which is called as the qualitative data. And remember qualitative data in our classification diagram qualitative qualitative data it was divided into two we called it as numeric data as one and the other one we called it as alphanumeric. So, the qualitative data typically in the industry known, okay. So, also known as also known as categorical data, categorical data among practitioners. Okay. So, when somebody says that I am working on categorical data, then they are talking about they are working on qualitative data. Okay. So, the major characteristics of a qualitative data okay, of a qualitative data is values are mostly a finite set. It is unlike the other case it is not an infinite set of value. Okay. It is there is a finite set of value for this. Okay. So, the first thing about this is as we said the numerical data when we talk about here which is the numerical qualitative data that we talk about it is it may it mostly contains uh, codes to represent something. Okay. An example of this is a department number or like your Aadhaar number etcetera. 
so what the when the Aadhaar number when you use the Aadhaar number you can identify that this Aadhaar number is used to uh, represent an individual. Okay, the individual here is that whoever that person is. Okay, uh, and otherwise it doesn't really make much sense to anyone. Similarly, the other part is the what we talk about it as the alphanumeric. numeric data okay and in this case it is uh, data that is represented that is represented using textual characters textual characters so for example of this is answering a question yes no or sometimes the gender where you reply it as male female etc okay so this is the uh, important aspects of the uh, qualitative data now when we talk about it <coughs> the other one which is the textual data okay and textual data in practitioner's terms it is uncoded text data written in natural language it's written in natural language uh, so like for example of this would be an email or a customer complaint etc the major difference between textual data and the alphanumeric qualitative data is that alphanumeric data typically contains limited amount of text or characters to describe something whereas uh, in the textual data the this is large one so analyzing these data analyzing textual data requires natural language processing models ok. So, the qualitative data when people talk about it the qualitative data has a numerical data in this, but this numerical data is typically code of something ok. So, this like for example, postal code is an example of this which is a, a postal pin number a numerical value to assign to a particular post office. Similarly, in this case you have also called as the alphanumeric data which is represented using textual characters ok, where a male and female or a yes no something something like that it is not textual characters it is typically instead of the textual I would say that a limited characters ok. So, you do not have too many characters ok, sometimes people typically even say that this is at the max up to 250 characters uh, people make different classifications out of it. Whereas, here this is a much large ok, large amount of textual data typed into uh, the um, system or uh, is denoting or describing a major incident ok, like an email or a complaint of a, uh, a customer etcetera. And to do this you require multiple different models and if we get time in this class we will try to look into some of these models as part of that. Uh, before I get into the classification of the uh, other data aspects uh, which is used in most of the textbooks statistical textbooks one of the aspect I would like to bring to your guys notice is ok uh, you, you, you should understand that this continuous and the discrete data is always concerned with quantities ok. So, uh, what is the advantage of having a continuous and discrete data. So, where is this continuous and discrete this continuous and discrete data is coming from your this is a quantitative data ok. And this data has a major advantage this advantage is because it is concerned with quantities and the advantage is that you can perform mathematical or arithmetic arithmetic operations on them. on them 
So, you can do things you can do something like add subtract multiply etcetera. So, if you have continuous and discrete data which is quantitative data you can do arithmetic operations on the data. So, that is the big advantage. So, the lot of your so people say when I am doing mathematical model and I am using data then math you are specifically mentioning to either a continuous or a discrete data which is quantitative in nature. So, uh, as we said you can perform arithmetic operations on the quantitative continuous and discrete data. Also another part is another major advantage is that quantitative data can be ordered. What do you mean when data can be ordered which means data can be compared compared by an order relationship relationship of less than or equal to. So, an example is if somebody gives you a data of 2, uh, 17, 6, 58, 31 uh, etcetera like this then you can always order this basically saying that 2, 6, 17, 31, 58. The relationship is that 2 is less than 6 which is less than 17 which is less than 31 less than 58 like this. So, you can order them data ok. So, this is the major advantages of the quantitative data. You can use a less than or equal to relationship to order the data in this. Then qualitative data are not quantities. So, that as we said we have seen either codes or the. So, remember in when you talk about qualitative data you have either. So, qualitative we had either uh, numeric or which are basically codes or you had alphanumeric short text ok. So, but in some cases it can be ordered ok and when you can do that it is called ordered ordinal qualitative data. So, for example, if you are classifying something as low, medium and high. So, then obviously, low is less than medium is less than high. So, a low temperature could be a temperature which is like maybe less than uh, 20 degrees Celsius or something like that and medium temperature could be something between 21 to uh, 30 degrees Celsius and greater than 31 degrees Celsius could be a high. This you could think about it as a classify it into the form of a low medium and a high and then you can order this as well as that way. So, but that type of data is called as the ordinal qualitative data which is the ordered uh, qualitative data all right. Then there is another data which is called as nominal data these are non ordered qualitative data qualitative ok. Non ordered qualitative data is known as nominal data data among practitioners. The reason I am mentioning among practitioners because there is another nominal data that will come up which is typically what statisticians use and then there is slight difference on this. Also remember this ok, ordinal qualitative data, ordinal qualitative data uh, can be sometimes included included in the family of in the family of discrete data discrete data this discrete data is your quality quantitative discrete data discrete data and treated the same way treated the same way. So, what we are saying is that certain times ordinal qualitative data ok, what we talk about it can be sometimes included in the family of discrete data. 
like for example instead of the low medium and high if you are going with such kind of a binning then that can be used in the uh, it can be treated in the way say same that as of a quantitative discrete data not every time sometimes now let us think about how the statisticians or the academic research considers the data ok so the statisticians consider they they use the same phrases like nominal ordinal interval and ratio but we can always make a one to one comparison with them so let us talk about the first one which is called as the nominal data ok so nominal data is categorical categorical or discrete data ok which is ok uh, this is qualitative discrete data data uh, that are measured that are measured in categories ok. Example of this is gender. So, it can be a male, female or could be represented as a 0, 1 something like this alright. So, the most important aspect of this is uh, such data which means is usually mutually exclusive which means item can fall in one category or another ok not at the same time not in all not in multiple categories categories at the same time ok. So, the nominal is typically categorical or discrete data that are measured in categories and usually such data are mutually exclusive. So, that is so when statisticians talk about nominal data we are talking mostly about the qualitative discrete data or the categorical data. Then there is another data that is called as the ordinal data ok and ordinal data we will kind of look at it this way is also known as known as rank data ok. It is called as rank data because when comparison happens when comparison happens in such data there can be ties ties means multiple same values ok. Uh, so, what this will tell is rank data will tell the relative position so let's say when you guys write the final exam of this class and the scores are like out of 100 let's say there is a 100 then 98 98 and then 94 then uh, the rank of this is this is the person who is at the rank 1 these both are at rank 2 and uh, so there are 2 rank 2 and this is rank 4 ok is not the rank 3 and this because the rank 2 and 3 is shared by the 2 people who are exactly of the same marks. So, when you say that the 94 is the 4th rank and you have seen 1 and 2 so obviously the question where is 3 then you will obviously know there is 2, two ranks so that is one of the reason we got the fourth rank kind of a thing ok. So, rank data will obviously tell you the relative position of things ok. Then comes the next data which we call as the interval data ok. Statisticians call this as call this interval data 
as quantitative or continuous quantitative or continuous uh, but we distinguish we in this class okay we distinguish it as a subsection or a subsection of a quantitative data okay so when statistician says interval data they typically meant about just quantitative data or continuous data but for us continuous data is a subset of the quantitative data all right so uh, remember if you remember that diagram then we had this as a subsection of quantitative data then comes the ratio data okay it is also it's also a part of quantitative uh, or continuous data which is again a subset for us in the qualitative data the major thing is ratio data is unique is unique why is it unique because because of the existence of because of the existence of an absolute zero existence of an absolute zero point zero reference reference means zero point for us and hence various data values values can be directly compared okay so if you for example if you take the uh, weight of an individual if you think about it so somebody who comes with a weight of 60 kilograms and somebody comes with a weight of 75 kilograms these two are comparable because of the absolute of the 0 kilogram weight so this the person who is at 75 kilograms is 15 kilograms more than the 60 kilogram person okay so because of the absolute zero you can compare it that way okay uh, so i hope that you guys now understand that the usage of statisticians the nominal data the ordinal data interval data and ratio data how does it maps to our classification of quantitative data and qualitative data and textual data okay now the obvious question is why data types are important for us why do we need to learn all these different type of data types okay or why understanding data types uh, is important important to practitioners okay this is one of the most important question that we have to answer why do we need to do this what is the most important aspect of it because the reason is identifying the data types okay if you identify what's the data types it helps us to narrow down the search for appropriate analytic tools for data analysis so if you know the type of the data which data type it belongs to then it will help you to choose the appropriate analytics tools rather than trying to use all analytic tools which are large in number it is better that you can choose appropriate analytic tools depending upon the type of the data Uh, so that you can do analysis out of this so how what are the general rules i mean how do you choose which one it is there are two general rules which is typically uh, advised for practitioners i mean there are many other things also but for the time being for practitioners let's just look at this rule the first rule is if the data collected if the data collected is quantitative we have quantitative data then 
parametric uh, statistics or what we can call it as parametric analytical tools okay can be used for can be used for making the decision used for decision making so when we say that if the data collected is quantitative the data is quantitative then parametric tools or parametric analytical tools can be used what are some of the parametric analytical tools that you might have heard across obvious example is t test is one example then analysis of variance or what we typically called as anova these are all examples of parametric data okay now another rule rule number 2 okay if the data collected if the data collected is nominal or ordinal okay you know what it is nominal or ordinal in the previous slides we have gone through that then then non parametric non parametric statistics or non parametric analytic tools tools is preferred are preferred not is are preferred are preferred to make the decisions okay so as we said if the data is nominal or ordinal if there is a, if it is an ordered data or nominal data then we would require recommend the, the use of non parametric statistics ok. Typically many people does not have heard too much about a non parametric statistics, but one very popular one is a chi square test ok. Yeah, this is not x square it is chi square it stands a Roman sorry Greek letter chi chi square test another one is k s test which stands for Kolmogorov Spirinov test. I have no idea about the spelling, Russian spellings are sometimes foreign to me. So, these are the two general rules that we follow rule number 1 and rule number 2. Rule number 1 is about if the data is quantitative, we use parametric statistics or parametric analytical tools, and if the data is nominal or, or ordinal data, then we use non parametric uh, analytic tools. Okay. So, with this we are able to understand that depending upon the data what we use or depending upon the type of data uh, choosing appropriate tools is important and as well as having appropriate having a data in one form and if you think that there is a better tool that is available in, in another form of data then you can think about even finding ways to transform one data to another. Let us say for example if you have the data the temperature of uh, one city for a particular time period continuously then you can basically classify them or bin them into different categories and we will see how that to be done and then we can say that okay this can be hot less hot cold humid that kind of a conditions can be put into this. So, this allows you to transform data from one form to another as well where you can appro choose appropriate data transformation tools. So, as analytics or people who are practicing analytics it is more important for you guys to understand these aspects of the data and so that you can select appropriate tools so that it will help you to make your decisions which is predominantly in the form of a workflow decisions or in the form of a control decisions. Thank you for your patient listening and we will continue with the rest of the lecture in the next class. Thank you.